Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about Unit 4, Topic 2, Classical Conditioning. Classical conditioning happens when an individual links two or more stimuli together. With the first stimulus comes in an illicit response, a behavior in anticipation of the second stimulus. This type of learning happens unconsciously. Ivan Pavlo is credited as the father of classical conditioning. He's most known for his experiments with dogs and saliva. Pavlo noticed that when you put food in front of a dog, they salivate, even before eating the food. Here we can see the food food is an unconditioned stimulus, and the dog's response of drooling is an unconditioned response. An unconditioned stimulus is a stimulus that naturally triggers a response. You don't need to be taught how to respond, while an unconditioned response is a response that does not need to be learned and occurs naturally. So for the dog, drooling at the sight of food is completely natural and completely unlearned. For another example, imagine you're at a coffee shop and you're getting coffee, and the barista spills coffee on your hand. Your unconditioned response would be a feeling of pain, and the unconditioned stimulus would be the hot coffee. Now Ivan Pavlov wanted to see if the dog would associate the food with other stimuli. So he isolated the dog in a room to eliminate other variables and stimuli. He put a tube in the dog's cheek to collect saliva and expose the dog to different neutral stimuli, which are stimuli that elicit no response from a subject. For example, this apple probably does not elicit any response from you. If it does, it maybe is a little one. This is a neutral stimulus. But if we make slight changes to the apple, now you probably have a response to it. It is still an apple, but you associate this apple now with the company Apple. For Pavlov, the neutral stimulus was a tone. Before Pavlov would place the food down for the dog, he would ring a bell. This is the initial process of associating the neutral stimulus, the bell, with the unconditioned stimulus, the food. This is known as acquisition. This is when the unconditioned stimulus and the neutral stimulus are paired together in order to attempt learning of a conditioned response. So Pavlov is pairing the food with the bell and conditioning the dog to show the response of drooling to a new stimulus. Eventually, Pavlov would take the food away and just have the dog hear the bell. And after being conditioned, the dog began to salivate at the sound of the bell, anticipating that the food was to come. In Pavlov's experiment, after the conditioning occurred, the bell became a conditioned stimulus, and the dog drooling to the bell became a conditioned response. Remember, a conditioned stimulus is when a stimulus that is neutral is paired with an unconditioned stimulus to trigger a conditioned response. A conditioned response is when a previously neutral or unconditioned response is occurring due to a conditioned stimulus. Essentially, there has been a learned response to a previously neutral stimulus. Now that isn't all that Pavlov discovered with classical conditioning. He also looked into five major conditioning processes. Acquisition, extinction, spontaneous recovery, generalization, and discrimination. Remember, we've already talked about acquisition, which is when the initial learning occurs. And while acquisition is the learning occurring, extinction is the opposite. Pavlov found that if the dog was continuously presented with the sound of the bell, but no food came after it, the dog would salivate less and less. This is known as extinction. It occurs when the unconditioned stimulus is not paired with the conditioned stimulus anymore. Interestingly enough though, Pavlov also discovered that if the time passed without the dog hearing the bell, say an hour or so, the dog would start to salivate to the bell again. This is known as spontaneous recovery. This is the reappearance after a pause of an extinguished conditioned response. We can see this process graphically. When acquisition is occurring, we have our neutral stimulus paired with our unconditioned stimulus. As time goes on, the strength of the conditioned response and intensifies. In Pavlov's case, this was the bell and food. We then can see if we have just the conditioned stimulus by itself without the unconditioned stimulus, extinction occurs. And as more time passes, the strength of the conditioned response decreases. However, if we pause for a period of time, we can see spontaneous recovery of the conditioned response. But if we have the CS alone again, extinction starts all over. Now, another discovery that Pavlov made was that when the dog was presented with different tones that were similar to the bell, the dog also salivated. This is known as stimulus generalization which is when a subject responds to a similar CS. Pavlov also discovered that he could teach the dog to recognize different stimuli. This is known as stimulus discrimination. If Pavlov played a similar sounding bell but never gave the dog food for that specific bell, the dog would learn not to salivate to that particular stimulus. Lastly, Pavlov also looked at what would happen when a new neutral stimulus was introduced to a subject and paired with an already conditioned stimulus. This neutral stimulus became a new CS without the unconditioned stimulus being present. This is known as higher order conditioning conditioning or second order conditioning. Originally, we had our conditioned stimulus, which triggered the conditioned response. Now we are taking a new neutral stimulus and putting it before the conditioned stimulus. For example, if Pavlov could now turn a light on before he rang the bell to trigger the dog to salivate. What Pavlov found was if he did this enough times, the dog would eventually associate the light being turned on with food, which was pretty groundbreaking because the light was never connected and paired with the food in the first place. The food was always paired with the bell. It's actually pretty interesting to think about how many different 
stimuli in our own lives trigger certain responses. For example, did you check your phone or glance at your phone when watching this video? Did you notice that the iPhone text message sound played a couple times throughout this video? If you have an iPhone, you associate this sound with a text message and will check your phone to see who texted you. Or perhaps you never text people anymore and extinction has already started to occur. But if I play this sound, you probably will check your phone to see who snapped you. But before you go and check your phone, let's practice what we just learned. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get notified when I post new videos. And of course, check out that ultimate review packet and my Discord server. Both resources are great for IEP psychology and they'll help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. The ultimate review packet has practice questions, quizzes, study guides, answer keys, and much more for every single unit of AP Psychology. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.